Hi, I'm Jason Stahl, editor of Body Shop Business. Today's high-performing collision centers have standardized their materials and processes to help ensure consistent and quality results. Even with standardization, sometimes problems can occur during the bodywork and paint process. Joining me today is Tim McKinney, Senior Application Engineer from Evercoat. Tim has worked in body shops and has dealt with almost every issue while working for Evercoat. Today, Tim will discuss some of the do's and don'ts of the bodywork and paint process to help make your shop more productive, avoid rework, and save you money. Tim, what's the difference between a, a pinhole and a micro pinhole? That's a good question. Uh, a pinhole would be something that you can actually see. So when I'm in a shop and I'm talking about addressing a pinhole, if I have this area sanded and a pinhole is something I can actually look to see a defect in the surface, it's going to be a little, a, a little hole, if you will. Uh, about the size, maybe you would take a needle or a, a thumbtack and you know, put some marks into it. If I can see those from about this far away, I call those a pinhole. Yeah. But micro pinholes, well, I'm getting older. These are, these are bifocals. If I gotta reach down in there and actually get to, to where I'm looking very close for them, yeah. those are the micro pinholes. Okay. Micro pinholes are just pinholes, they're just really small. Okay. And a lot of times, what we've seen over the years, as the chemistries have changed for the primers, you know, we're starting to see more uh, ultra high solid, low VOC primers, all these materials are starting to change chemically because of the solvents that are in them. Years back, they would fill in those micro pinholes, but what's happened nowadays is they don't quite fill in quite as much. Okay. So you'd apply the primer, and then you'd come back in after they flashed off, and you'd see these little bitty, tiny, almost like a sewing needle spot right in the area. Sometimes it might be in clusters, sometimes it might be around the perimeter of the repair. Yeah. So in order to fix those, we've come up with a product that helps to fix those particular products those particular areas called 440 Express. This is a 1K polyester. Now what it's going to do is when we apply it over the repair when it's sanded, it does two things. It helps to find the micro pinholes, what I call the no see -ems because I can't see them. Yeah. Finds them, fills them, fixes them without any sanding being required for solvent-based material. If it's a water-based primer, we're going to let, need to let that set up about 15 minutes and give it a little bit of a scuff in order to make sure that we get the water-based materials to actually cure or stick properly uh, because we've actually been hearing about 1k waterborne primers that are going directly over top of bare metal something that was just unheard of you know 30 years ago but that's the technology point we're at now one of the ways i've helped to do that is even to take like a an led light okay. something about the light spectrum of an led mm -hmm. as you're shining around the repair you can actually find some of those pinholes much easier yeah uh, and if I know where to look, I know where to address it with that particular product. Tim, what is the number one issue you hear out in the field when it comes to applying body filler? Well, the number one question we get and the number one bane of every body tech that's out there using a body filler, pinholes. How do I get them? Where do they come from? Mm -hmm. uh, we were talking a moment ago, some of the different stories we've heard about, you know, what the thought process is on pinholes. And as I said, you know, the, the, the quality of the product has a lot to do in the beginning, but the application has a lot to do as well. And I actually staged up a piece of plexiglass to kind of show you and the rest of the group watching this, you know, that you know, there's not any trickery. I can show you how to make them and how to not make them. So let me mix up a little bit of product here. Okay. And then I'll actually put it on the piece of plexiglass and show you. So with the, the same product here. Okay, so now I've got it all mixed up. So let me show you real quick. I get this piece of plexiglass, no camera trickery here. So I'm gonna apply it on one side here. So I'm gonna apply it on this side the right way. So as I said, with that repair earlier, I want to wet the surface out. Once I've got it properly wet, then I wanna slowly build the product up. Now, how often have you walked through a body shop and seen when they're trying to do a heavy fill and they come over and they do this? Wait, probably, a, probably a time yeah. or two, right? Yeah. I see it occasionally. Maybe they'll do this. All right. Do you see a difference how it looks on the top? Oh my goodness, yes. There's craters over here. Yeah, you can see a lot. You can actually see the air pockets trying to work their way up. Mm -hmm. But now, here's the definitive part on this. I'll peel all this off. So 
so we can get a good sharp edge to see from the bottom. Now, if you look at it from the bottom side, on this side you don't see any air pockets at all, yeah. but over on this side, see the air pockets. Wow, yeah. So those are air pockets and they're going to be pinholes when we sand them open. They're going to be from start to finish all the way through. There's no way I'm not going to have pinholes on that side, but on this side I don't have any to start out with. Exactly, yeah. It's very clear here. Yeah. So this is an application technique that's really going to be pivotal on how to not get pinholes. As we talked about the sand scratch, you know, if I ground that area, I'd have a lot more air pockets. So we wouldn't be able to see it from the bottom if it had been ground, but you'd have more air. So by having extra grind marks in the metal, uh, a sloppy application initially, those are going to start that pinhole process. And once they're in there, we can't take them back out. But if we fine sand the surface as we did with the repair here, uh, we put that pressure on to wet the surface, mm -hmm. as you can see on the surface. It's starting to slow it flow out a little bit, but you can see a difference in how smooth it is and the air pockets trying to work their way through actually. Tim, we mentioned catalyst earlier. How do you know the catalyst ratio? Oh, well, what we started to do here recently is we started putting a sticker on top of our cans, and that gives a, a quick visual reference. That's why, if you notice, there's not a lot of verbiage on there. So it works for any language. You can quickly look at it and see for a two inch puddle, you want to have a bead of cream hardener that's going to be about halfway across, so one inch. For a four inch puddle, you want a bead to go all the way across like I showed a moment ago. And if it goes up to an eight inch puddle as we have on the top of the can there, it's going to go all the way across and at least another uh, line that's going to be halfway across that. The reason being, think about it, how we know it's a four inch puddle? Well, most of our spreaders are four inches in diameter. So if it's about that, it needs to go all the way across. If it's an eight inch puddle, well, then we have two four inch puddles. That's why it's got to go all the way across. And the extra material on the outside, well, that's about the mass of another puddle. That's why we need that extra half line on there. So we put that on there just to kind of give our technicians that are using our product a visual cue to know roughly how much hardener to put into it. And again, there's some windage on it. But if they strive to get it at 2%, they're going to be much better off. Hmm, great. I've seen repairs that are darker blue and lighter blue than that. What's up with that? Well, if they're darker blue, that means they put in extra cream hardener, extra blue hardener, and that's why it's darker. It's over catalyzed. If it's lighter blue, and the worst case is you see no hints of blue into it, that tells you it's radically under catalyzed. So we're going for that light, uh, soft blue that we have in that color right there. Each of our products, if they start off to be a different color and you add the blue into it, they're going to be different colors. But we want to always have some degree of blue showing up in the repair. Tim, thank you so much for your time today, giving us all this great information on troubleshooting tips when applying body filler. I'm Jason Stahl. Thanks for watching.